Karen, okay, so mine is, I'm Lynn Stokes, and I'm in the uh, statistics department, and I actually do classroom flipping too, but I do the lazy man's version, which is that I um, don't make my own videos. I, when I heard Scott last semester talking about doing this, I thought, oh man, the thought of having to learn all that technology and figure out how to record it and all that stuff, I don't feel like it. So I started looking around for uh, information that I could, that I could uh, filch from the internet, and I found uh, a lot of, from the material that I teach in my intro stats class, uh, there is already a video like his for every single thing we cover, and uh, much better than I could do, because the, the lighting is better, the, uh, everything they, they, they have more of the uh, equipment and so on, I guess, that's why. Plus, I guess they spend more time at it. And I furthermore found that the AP Stats high school videos are the best. <laughs> so I have a lot of those up for different topics. So well, I have this schedule. And so for today, for example, we were talking about how to use normal tables. So I have a topic, and it says before class, you read this. Uh, this is our topic. You read from the textbook a particular section. You watch the video. So for today, there were actually, I actually had two videos. They're typically short. This one is uh, six In minutes. Video, we're going to look at so let's see. I'll show you what I mean by being a little bit better if I can. Figure. Areas under the standard normal curve using the standard normal table. I don't know if you can hear that at all. How do I turn that right up? This video looks at tables that give the Over area here. to the left. In other words, things that like what is a table that gives the area between the zero. So this guy has a lot more oomph to his uh, presentation than I do. I don't always use his. There's lots of people that do nice videos, but this he goes very step by step on how to, uh, and he uses all the software that we've been talking about to uh, do um, his, his um, so this one was six minutes and 16 seconds. The other one I think was about the same. Oh, so what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get rid of this. This is not my computer, so I'm not very familiar with it. Okay, so then they're supposed to watch that and then they're supposed to do a quiz. Um, so each day I have a quiz over the stuff that they're supposed to be uh, looking at. So again, I make it cut off at, uh, at, at 30 minutes before class time starts. And then in class, we look at the, at the results so it's just a few minute uh, question each time. So um, on, I want to show you something that's new on uh, Blackboard, this, this version of Blackboard that I really like. So here was today's quiz. So I show them, this isn't the new part, but we look at, so I look at them between 8.30 and 9. I look at how the students did. I figure out what it is that they got, what it was that they didn't get. And um, then I'll go over the questions in class. We can see you know, how many of them got each one right. We discussed it. It seems like it's something that needs some coverage in class. I'll do that. And one thing, that, the thing that's new in this version of Blackboard, I'm sorry the Ed Psych person left, there is an item analysis that I find very handy here that gives the psychometric characteristics of the of the quiz that you have. So you can look to see um, for each quiz, you not only have the percentage of people that answer it correctly, but something called discrimination, which lets you figure out if, if it's a good question, basically. If, if everybody is answering it at the same rate, or if better students answer it better and worse students answer it worse, that's actually what you want. You want, you want items that can tell who's uh, you know, you, that sort of measures the ability or the knowledge of the students. And so this is a quick way to sort of judge your exams. Also, if you have an item uh, if, where, where this discrimination rate is very low, it tells you, I think what it tells you rather than assessment, 
we're really not trying to assess the student. We're trying to, we're trying to, I'll, I'm trying to figure out how well I taught the, the stuff. So if I got one that everybody answered at about the same rate, and that's not very high, I figure out I didn't teach that very well. So that might be something I want to spend more time on in the lecture. So the thing that was, is time consuming here is finding the videos, because for our topics anyway, there are, must be 50 videos on base there, which is something that we teach um, in, a, in an intro course like this. So my colleague, Monty McGee, and I, Monty's also doing this, sitting right there, she and I kind of split up the looking for videos on particular topics to try to find one that's short and one that's um, good. Uh, I use the class time for working, for doing activities. I, I have, um, have accumulated over the years ac actual activities rather than just homework problems, so I do a lot of that. Walking around the room, I still have students who you know, sit in the back. Today when we were doing the normal distribution and I was giving them a normal distribution problem, there's this guy sitting in the back um, with his head down. So I mean, you can't make them, you can't make them learn it if they're not going to participate, but at least he would have had a chance to try to figure out how to do his homework before class. I mean, it's not the, it's not a panacea, but I think it does um, give students who are interested a chance to get a head start on homework and maybe not make it not quite so uh, intimidating. So that's it. Do you know the item analysis feature, is that only available if they do the quiz in Blackboard? Yes. 